Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at setting up a water sprayer for an intercooler in our Motec M1 software. Now, the firmware package I'm using here is a GPRP package, which will be the same as a GPR package. Other firmware packages may not have this programming option available, but we're going to go through what we have available in this firmware package. So let's jump in here and take a look at where we can find our intercooler water spray configuration setup. We're going to go through a schematic talking about what we have to account for in terms of wiring in our MOTEC and the components that we need to make sure are installed for this to be implemented successfully on our vehicle. So jumping in here, we're going to move from our tuning area here and we're gonna move all the way across here into our setup. Now under setup, we're gonna move across here into all calibrate. We're going to have a specific window here in our drop down menus. It's gonna be relating to the intercooler. This is where we configure and set up all the things that are relevant for the intercooler water spray. Now, first things first, before we jump into some of our programming details, I wanna quickly go through what we can expect in terms of the components that we need to have and some of the wiring details for setting up a water intercooler sprayer. So coming up on screen, we're gonna find that we have our schematic. It's gonna, again, just go over the components that we have to worry about and our basic wiring details. So first thing on our schematic here, we find a MoTeC M1 box. Then we're gonna find a battery, a 30 amp relay, we find a front mount intercooler as our example here. We have an ambient temp sensor. We have an intercooler temp sensor. So those would be wired into the MoTeC under a analog temperature input. We also have a water spray pump, and then we have a water spray nozzle. Now you may have uh, multiple nozzles, but you'll have a singular pump. And the pump's gonna be controlled through the relay, and the relay will be turned on from the MoTeC under specific conditions that we wanna have the actual sprayer start to spray on our intercooler. If you're unfamiliar with a water spray nozzle spraying water onto an intercooler and the benefits of it, let's just talk about that real quick. So we'll find that we have our hot side and our cold side of the intercooler. If the intercooler is doing its job, ideally we would be very close to ambient temperature as we're in positive manifold pressures. Now with an air to air intercooler, we will find that depending on the efficiency of the compressor of the turbocharger or the supercharger we're using and depending on how efficient the intercooler is going to be it will see temperatures anywhere between 5 to 20 degrees celsius normally above ambient temperature ideally we'd like to see ambient temperature but it's not going to be always the case again it really depends on the efficiency zones we're operating in we can get into a situation where we have really hot intake air temperatures because the intercooler just simply can't do its job Maybe the intercooler is too small. Maybe we have compressor out of its efficiency range. Either way, we want to avoid getting into those situations because high inlet air temperature can lead to knock conditions. So in order to make sure we're always operating our engine in the most efficient manner to avoid knock or pre-ignition, when we have a supercharger or turbocharger installed on our engine, it may be something to consider using a water spray nozzle setup like this. So the water will have a lot of uh, absorption of the heat from the inner cooler we just simply spray the water onto the core and as the air is passing over it as the air is passing through it coming from our compressor we'll find that it will drastically reduce our inlet air temperatures and I've seen as is, is, is a, a drastic of a reduction as having below ambient temperature in some situations if the vehicle is moving fast enough and we have the right amount of nozzles and everything is going to be efficient you can actually get below ambient temperature, which is probably the most ideal thing. But if we can get to ambient temperature, that is also ideal as well. So it can really bring the efficiency level up of the intercooler and overall engine power production. Because if we have cold inlet air temps coming into the engine, we don't have to reduce the ignition timing because of knock or pre-ignition. And uh, we'll find the engine will naturally make a little bit more power because there isn't that heat soak there. So a lot of benefits from running a water spray nozzle setup. Now they used to use them pretty heavily on rally cars and they were very effective on rally cars, uh, turbocharged rally cars. So uh, let's jump in here and talk about now understanding what we have here in terms of our schematic. We'll leave that up on screen. We'll talk about what we need to do in terms of our configuration and setup. So what we need to first have installed is going to be an in, in intercooler temperature sensor. We can see on our schematic here that's mounted on the cold side of the intercooler. So the hot side would be the, where the compressor's pushing its hot air out into, and the cold side's gonna be what we actually bring into the engine. Now, 
we want to go and measure our intercooler temp on the cold side because we want to see essentially the difference between the hot and the cold and making sure that we're actually measuring what the intercooler is actually effectively reducing the air temperature to. And it may only be uh, 20 or 30 degrees above ambient, but it's still reducing it from a two or 300 degree inlet temperature coming into the intercooler. So it's a pretty drastic difference. We're not necessarily concerned about the hot side of the intercooler, although you could put a temperature sensor on the hot side to be able to measure that and actually to see the true cooling efficiency of the intercooler. But we want to be able to mount an intercooler temp sensor on that cold side. So we can see where that's mounted. Now what we need to do here is go here under the inner cooler. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.